Quinta literally told all of us at one one of those gatherings when we were all together, she said, everybody change nothing <laughs> about yourself. Change absolutely nothing. Don't think you have to do this. Don't think you have to do that. Come back just <laughs> as you are. are. I had written the pilot and then the pilot was casted. So before the pilot, uh, you know, I, I didn't have people in mind necessarily to play each character. It was all kind of based on auditions. Like I will say Cheryl was on my wish list for Barbara, but I just didn't think that we would be able to um, have her at the time. But everyone else was kind of open-ended, except for actually, except for um, Gregory. I did have Tyler in mind for that role because I had worked with him before and thought that he would just be great to play it. So then once we got our cast, and the pilot was picked up to series. Then we got in the writer's room. And what was great is we got to watch the pilot, including me, and now know the strengths that we can play to with this cast. Lisa Ann Walter does this really well. She's very good with the camera in this way. Cheryl Lee Ralph is very good, um, you know, in, in these quiet moments and, and the strength there that we can use. And um, Christopher Perfetti is a wonderful physical yet very calm actor and and just once you get the people you know that you can start to think about that in the writing and so that's that's one of the most exciting parts i think of writing is um like dolls like life-size dolls you also get to play with with your writing okay so if the store has 10 potatoes right and you take away two of them how many potatoes would the store have left? Janine, what did I say about taking my potatoes from the lunchroom? But visual learning is so much better. Well, guess what? Now you have zero potatoes. I don't know what it feels like to feel that something is a hit. I know I knew from the time I read it that it was a good show. I don't know if I, I was predicting that it was gonna hit much less in this way, but I knew it was a good show and was hoping for a hit. So everybody, it seems, agreed with me <laughs> that it, it was a good show and it was like a, a fun experience. That's what I was feeling more than thinking about whether it's a hit or not. I was just like, this is this has been great, a great experience shooting this, this show. For me, it was during the shoot of the pilot and Tyler, who plays Gregory, the two of us just had a moment where we looked at each other and he said, you feel it, right? And I said, man, you feel it too, don't you? He said, yeah. The, it was the fact that we both felt that we had something very special. The whole feeling that, wow, you had six people who actually really got along, who actually fit like a zipper and made everything that Quinta had created just come alive and it was absolutely magical hearing just people everyday people talk about the show i think that means that you've like done a good job making a network television show when you know people were telling me i'm at this random restaurant and people are talking about abbott next next to me to me that started to feel like okay you know the word of mouth is is happening People are talking about the show. The word is traveling. And that felt like how I know when a show is 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 good. When people, other people are saying like, you need to see this. That's when I felt like we had done our job. You know what? I've had some great experiences, but nothing quite like this. As amazing as Dream Girls was, it's definitely not quite like this. As much as people love Sister Act 2, it's definitely not like this. People really love Moesha too, but it is definitely not like this. This feels like a warm hug from even some of the most unexpected people, and it happens at the most random times. I still live my life and like walk down the street and people will be walking their dogs and they're like, Mrs. Howard, I'm an educator and I love the show. I love her. Oh, I can't wait till you all come back. It's just, oh my God, it just feels so good. I think I definitely look at Cheryl as um, a beautiful <laughs> woman, but also a an OG of of acting has been doing this for so long and has been so solid and consistently putting out good work. And I think that's how Janine looks at Barbara for sure. I mean, that's how I look at Cheryl to me. 
just like a living <laughs> a living legend in our presence, but very good at what you do. Like Cheryl is a good actress and I was really excited to be able to make something like Abbott because Cheryl gets to have yet another platform to be great in. And I think in a different way than we've seen in a long time, because, you know, like just you're a fantastic actress. Thank you very much. Follow my lead. Here we go. Mm, 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 mm. What's happening? Oh, come on now, son. Moving those hips a little, it is not going to kill you. Now, let's do this math problem again. Oh, what's Turkey Farmer's name? Hank? Yes. All right. Hank has two turkeys. He gets two more. It's the being of it all. You know, sometimes I would be doing what I think is absolutely nothing. And then Quinta or... Janelle might say to me, now that was everything. <laughs> that was everything. And I'm just, just like, really? I was literally just here. For me, it's a very relaxed sort of situation, you know, from my comfort shoes to my twin sets <laughs> to the girls. <laughs> it's, it's, a very, it's a very relaxed way of approaching a character. I don't have to be on at all, but I have to be on my game for this character, for this woman, you know, where the placement of her voice, the actions, the fact that she doesn't always need to talk to let you know exactly how she feels. As an actor, you're always thankful for those moments, those roles, to be able to add a little bit more to your arsenal of qualities as an actor, as a performer. Hey, task at hand. Uh, you're right, I'm doing it again. Anyways, the point is these were built for comfort and speed. Also, I brought your shorts. Oh, thanks, babe. So just out of curiosity, how'd you guys meet? Oh, I was in a late night line for sneakers and he was there protesting the inhumane work conditions of the place making the sneakers. I got the limited edition smoky foams and a man that day. Oh, I get it now. I forget that black people can also be annoying. So originally when I came up with the idea, there was actually one more character that I had in it. She was a queer character, a queer, a queer teacher. After the first round of development for Abbott, it felt like there were too many main characters. One kind of had to go. So Blair went and the ones you see who are still with us stayed. I had the feeling that I wanted to have, you know, the, the queer representation with one of our characters. And I always thought that Jacob as a character would be next in line for that. And before we started fully writing the first season, I brought that into play and, you know, all of our writers agreed. Then it was a conversation with our actor, Chris Perfetti, because that wasn't there when he auditioned. So I wanted to make sure that that was something that he was okay with and he was absolutely down. And it's something we kind of knew from the moment we started the writer's room. So in a way it was always there, but it wasn't. Um, it just kind of came about for his character when we started writing, you know, like episode two. It feels wonderful that people are feeling represented in this show, whether that be through queer, queer representation, Black Americans or educators too, like a minority groups feeling seen in this show. I will say that in creating Abbott, weirdly, my goal was not like diversity. It was just, these are the people that make up Abbott Elementary. These are the people who work at that school. At this school is a predominantly Black teaching group and a predominantly Black student body population. And ultimately, I feel that's the key to more diversity in television is not just sticking characters into a white world, but actually greenlighting the stories that naturally bring those people to the forefront. We weren't worried about diversity at all while we were making this show. We were worried about being funny. And that's because we didn't have to do the task of like sticking people in to fulfill some quota. <laughs> we already brought everything that's being looked for so hard to the table. It just goes to show like if more stories like this are 
shows like this are brought to the forefront and greenlit, we won't even have to have those like kind of corny discussions anymore about, you know, where's the diversity in this thing? Honestly, like don't stick me in Mrs. Maisel. I'd rather see a show that's about our people. So some of the younger ones, this is their first time on a set ever. And our set also looks a lot like a real school. They, they are aware they're coming to the Warner Brothers lot. They're coming into a thing. But, you know, these are kids who are in uniform. They see us with the teacher badges on and they, they're doing worksheets while they're, while they're sitting there being filmed. They're just doing actual, like, school papers. They have school on the lot, too, you know, with their studio teachers. So a lot of them have this, like, blurred line. And for what it's worth, we did try to interfere. I did try a couple times to tell them my name is Quinta. They said they saw Miss Teague's, like, they saw the principal. They saw, that's, they saw what they, they're kids, you know, but they're just delightful. If anything, it made them more natural on this mockumentary style show to have these kids who are so new to the game instead of maybe kids who've been doing this since they were like, you know, babies. babies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like we kind of had these fresh newbies who were so compelling to the mockumentary style. I'm the yeah. big baby on the show. I just realized. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was about to say that with presenting a brand new archetype, you really need like raw, like, yeah, you know, yeah. And, it, and it helps for I'm someone thinking, to come in. One day I told Quince I was going to get acting lessons because I was intimidated standing next to Cheryl Lee and <laughs> I didn't want to embarrass myself. And she, and she, you basically told me not to. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> you were I like, don't know. Why? No. <laughs> And so, hey, I, I, all, all I heard was less work and, 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 and less money spent for me. So I did. <laughs> hey, for the record, I'm not like against acting. I did have fear, though, of you know, going somewhere in the middle of the season and someone being like, eh, 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 and doing, I don't know, and like without knowing what you were doing, undoing everything that was special about you. I don't know. <laughs> that scared me. It was so, it's so interesting because. Quinta literally told all of us at one one of those gatherings when we were all together, she said, everybody change nothing <laughs> about yourself. Change absolutely nothing. Don't think you have to do this. Don't think you have to do that. Come back just <laughs> as you are. Hey, what's everyone watching? Yo, so my bull desk, the gym. Whoa, he's wearing the honeydew's wings. Abbott, ultimate desking challenge done. Teacher style. Whoa, what the? Is that Mr. C? Desking's deaded. I very quickly came up with the idea of desking, of just the notion of it in the writer's room helped build it out. But like, I had seen kids online who were stealing paper towel, um, what do you call it? it the paper towel dispensers. Yeah. Dispensers. They were stealing them from their classrooms. And this was a TikTok trend. And I'm like, this is probably driving the teachers crazy. But I'm only seeing the kid end of it, which is like, they were stealing it to show off on TikTok. And I was like, what if something similar like that happened at Abbott? What would that mean for our team? Just silly. Everybody is just on fire. It's one of our favorite ones, for sure. Sometimes we, we just laugh. Yeah. But... We just literally just laugh. Yes. We really try to be very professional about it, but there are some moments where we just cannot hold it yeah. in. We just can't. And it's and it's like okay, you know, we we know we're gonna get it. Okay, a scene stealer moment for me was I'm gonna go with Abbott. I don't mean to be biased. Lisa had a scene a scene stealing moment in um it's the Courtney episode. And um it's the moment where she's telling Janine, you gotta keep making making hoagies. I remember then see, I saw that written as an inspira inspirational phrase, beautiful and needlepoint somewhere. <laughs> and like I think she has this wonderful way of getting very emotional in a in an area. She's, you know, she spends a lot of the time on screen being tough, but can also bring, you know, bring that down and say something like that. So I thought that was a scene stealing moment. Also, all of Oscar Isaac and Moon Knight, just out of control and and too good. Like he deserves an Emmy, an Oscar, a Grammy, a Tony, whatever he wants. Uh, he is too good. He's too good. Let's see, a scene-stealing moment that I've watched in comedy, maybe 
if I'm going to be open about it, I'll add, I'll add Ted Lasso saying, well, you know, I've always wanted to taste tea and always thought that it would taste like, you know, brown water. And well, that's exactly what it does taste like brown water. So that, that to me was kind of funny. I saw that on TV. I laughed out on the airplane. I great Ted Lasso, out. Cheryl. <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> I always say like Quinta is Quinta's character Janine is underrated because she's like doing so much and that you know mm. I get a lot of focus because I'm doing big broad jokes and and stuff not that that's not also hard doing you know hit, hitting jokes and stuff but uh this is a small thing just an example but I just feel like the choices Quinta makes is always funny to me and so in desking when her and Jacob are interrogating when you say it's fun to be to, you know, to like be nice or like uh, I guess confess, and you're like, well, so so why don't you just tell us what's happening and who's doing it? Like you just, it's such a like dead sentence, but you made it funny with your. I just thought I I watched that like over and over, just that little section. And then I mean I don't watch much stuff, which is weird, but I I did just start watching. Uh, the uh, Righteous Gemstones and anything yes! Walter Goggins. Oh, yeah. Anything Walter Goggins. And I'm also, I'm sorry, I don't know the actress's name, but the, the sister. Me either, and she's so funny. So good, yeah. So so I'll, I'll say that. I was almost going to say Righteous Gemstones, but I've been talking about the show too much lately, so I didn't. Uh, and I'm happy to do it. <laughs> I'm happy because I love that show. Yeah. I mean, those jelly beans on Janine's belt. Those um, clogs of mine that Miss Janelle likes to make fun of. <laughs> yes, what are you doing? I, I, are that, there men below the line? I don't even really like, know what that means. <laughs> okay, oh. I would say the cameraman because you know this is like really my first. Yeah role on uh, my second role on T the first one I kind of scanned my way into so it, I don't know if it counts but so for them to be so good to ha I was just so comfortable like a lot of the the look to cameras and stuff some of them are scripted but all of them aren't and I'm really like looking at the cameraman like like they're my friends like can you believe this you know what I mean and just how they were so unintrusive they were there but not there knew exactly yes. what to catch when you right. see the the what they chose to shoot and how they shot it, I just thought it was all amazing and 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 but everybody yeah. that's why this was like such a great experience. Like everybody was great. Wardrobe and, and camera and props and and everybody was like excited to be there every day and I was happy to see them. Like that doesn't happen often. Mm -hmm. you know yeah, I mean? true. Yeah. yeah. I have to agree with Cheryl and Janelle. Wardrobe was incredible. I think in a lot of ways, it's actually harder to do a show like this where it needs to be based in realism. And I think that she did a fantastic job in working with us and finding what would be best. And and I, I don't I just don't think it was as an easy task as it looks. And I was happy she got some like shine for that and variety because I find this to be let me not say as difficult as a period piece, but it's more difficult than your average sitcom, I think, to do. Um and then um same thing with Janelle camera and for the reason that they have to do a lot more work than average cameramen. They need to know the script. They have to know like when the jokes are hitting because they're a part of the storytelling, zooming in and zooming out and, and swishing the camera means they have to be super active in knowing the script. And it's not just sitting there and capturing their part of the storytelling. And I think my answer would be our COVID team because they were so good Ooh. productions were going down all around us and we did not they were like dropping like flies and we did not go down once and we had so many kids and there were you know a couple of kids who unfortunately and I literally mean like three tested positive but they were so active in making sure that they didn't come to set and that everyone was safe and taken care of and so they deserve a huge shout out because that's that also isn't easy to do to get such a big group of people to um you know adhere to COVID Insane. guidelines and, and make sure that yeah. we're time. people who do not want to and all of that. who wants to I, get a COVID test and they made it very seamless you know yes yeah. I also want to thank and big up our our writers room our it, it's you know how you get in my career I've got lots of scripts very often there's that 
moment where you say, oh my God, they're just not getting it. We need to like pump this up. People say to me all the time, are you all ad-libbing? I mean, you all just, all of that stuff just sounds so yeah. natural. It just sounds so real. And I, I always have to say, believe it or not, what you're seeing on the screen is for the most Looks part like, on yeah. the page. We are getting real scripts, very well written. Everything is on yeah. the page. Yeah. And that—that that is that I'm so thankful for our writers. Yeah. Yeah.